Um, okay, here, we, here I am, uh, Buenos Cameron Diaz. Um, I'm here, it's a great pleasure to be invited into uh, and meet Peter Williamson. How are you, Pete? I'm very uh, well, thank you. Welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, so we're standing in your entrance of your beautiful home, um, and on the wall here are three pieces that you're going to present in your show this Thursday at the AM Gallery. Yes, that's right. Would you like to talk about it? Sure. Well, I can tell you about this. is something of a series. Mm -hmm. um, this is called Tasty. It's made of corn husks ah. um, and palm inflorescence, um, and it's been nibbled at by all kinds of things. I like the texture that it has and the colour. Uh -huh. Um, and in the field or in the house? You mean the material was nibbled at out in the field or? Um, well, it was nibbled in the field, it was put into the home that we ate the contents of. Ah. And then um, this was stored and yeah. it was actually nibbled at a little bit by different kinds of things, funguses and ah, okay. tiny small things. And it's left, they've all left their, their mark on it. So the colours here um, are from the different sorts of mould and fungus and this texture here um, which is a lot gives it a lovely feathery mm. kind of look mm. is actually the product of um, animals making the absolute most of what was what was left inside the husk there. Right. Um, just to relate it back to the topic of the exhibition mm. which is urban woodland mm -hmm. um, uh, this was kind of my nod to the verge gardens that are springing yeah, up right. all over the inner city yeah. which uh, 20 years ago when I used to live in the, the desolate wasteland that was Wilson Street <laughs> at the time in the 80s um, the idea of verge garden was completely I know uh, something from outer space I know. and now it's actually becoming mm. quite uh, a popular idea yeah. so the idea of growing your own food in this lovely woodland that's sprung up mm. uh, over the last 20 years which is really what the show is about um, yeah, I wanted to include something about that. So Native that, grasses, yeah. Yeah, so that's okay. a particular piece. Um, this one is called Fluffy for fairly obvious <laughs> reasons. Um, uh, where's my finger? Yeah, it feels beautiful. Mm, so I mean, it does have a lovely texture. Damage, I mean, and what kind of grass is this? Um, this is grass that actually it actually grows by the seaside. Uh -huh. um, it grows particularly in the cemetery at Bronte okay. on, on the cliffs. So you go, you go for little harvesting trips? Um, yes, sort of go out to the edge of the of the woodland and mm -hmm. see what's there. And this particularly took my attention because of the the seeds that um, yeah. that come out. The idea that it's actually something that's particularly that's potentially generative of itself. So, so you're you're um, we weaving these baskets mm -hmm. and then threading them on, right? Um, well, they're they're included as the basket is actually made, okay. as the work is actually made. Um, this one, these particular ones are a slightly different colour to the centre ones and this mm. basket is telling the story of the season. Uh -huh. This was collected in the spring and as they come, as it circles in, they get older and greyer. Oh, okay, I can see that, I can see that, to yeah. the back to the ground and then yeah. from within is the, is the new seed. Now I should, I should confess that um, I was recently at a basket weaving, natural grass basket weaving workshop with you ah, yes. in a beautiful park near Index Yes. and I was all thumbs Yes. and I noticed, <laughs> I noticed you were very dexterous I was quite impressed because you know even even now you just look at you just look at these as objects and you just this is all done by hand you know and not and you'd have a you have a fluidity when you do it are you always that like, relaxed and fluid with them or some, um, some well, struggle or many years of practice people. yeah uh, but the basic techniques, getting started is, mm. is the most difficult part because this is repetitious. Yeah. All of this stuff is just, you're just doing the same thing over and over so again. So you just put some nice music on and just do it? That's pretty much what happens. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, get, let's go further into the house and as we walk down to your next piece, I'll just show you, keep walking, I'll just kind of show you the kind of uh, beautiful things Pete has. He's got a lot of Ray Cooks because um, he's a, an old friend of Ray's but has been a model for a lot of Ray's photographs. That's me. Oh, that's you. That's you. you got some uh, pretty good pecs there yourself. Yes, once upon a time. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, here's a Kurt Sorensen that Pete and I have been talking for about 10 minutes before. Yes, beautiful. Can't get the light properly, but we, I think we all know this, this particular series. 
You did? Yes, if only I had more. Beautiful. Stephen Bella. Stephen Bella, fantastic uh, uh, sculpture with bird bones, you know, mm. all kinds of bird bones. And, and some more cooks, they're, they're very dark, I'm not sure how they'll work out. Actually, they, no, oh, no, we're just getting lots of reflection. Mm. But, um, okay, the next, the next stuff in the next show. Um, well, that, that piece there is, but I don't know how the, what the light's like there. Okay, yeah, we're just looking at a, a wall piece made of very fine uh, twigs with thread, mm. threaded These, twigs. Individually, these works are called tree bones, mm -hmm. but this whole uh, 16 individual pieces work is called Armada. Uh -huh. um, ah. They remind me of the moment, they go through phases of reminding me of different things, but at the moment they look to me like men in boats with, raw, with oars. Okay, yeah, I can see that. And oh. All of, they're all made of exotic plants, plants uh -huh. that are exotic to Australia. Right, right. So the idea of the invaders coming to mm. to the woodland, I thought, was nicely represented by this. Mm. They make that, you know, most of the woodland that I'm talking about is made up of exotic trees. Oh, okay. Um, so, so around cities mainly, or...? Yeah, the, the idea is that it's... The woodland that sprung up in the inner city over the last 20 years has yeah. actually been planted, mm. intentionally planted okay. over that. Well, it's probably slightly more than 20 years now. Oh, my God. <laughs> right, right. That just me time is, time is slipping on. Deny, that just me denying my age. Now, uh, are these in the show? These pieces are in the show. Okay. These are called um, sun shields. Mm -hmm. Each one is called a sun shield. They're just numbered. And they're made oh, they're of Dracaena <laughs> Dracaena leaves and um, palm inflorescence, and it's the similar technique to the basketry. Look how nice they look on the actual mm, camera. No, nice. yeah, the oranges, you know. Yeah, great. Mm. It really picks up the colour. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, what was it? What, so, what did you just say? Oh, they're it's made. made as the, it's, they're made with the same technique as the baskets, mm -hmm. but um, they're they're flat. They don't have wow. any. They don't have any volume. They're, yeah. they're meant to be flat on the wall. Yeah. I know I've asked you about mass producing your work. You advised me about mass producing. I think I did. Last time we were drunkenly talking. <laughs> um, but but you are, just <clears throat> you do place things in furniture shops, high end furniture shops. Uh, I've been approached by people who do things like hotels. Yeah, and, right. And that kind of thing hmm. um, for work. Hmm. Um, I haven't. I haven't gone in that direction yet. Yeah. I would. I think I would. Mm. Like, you know, if the right opportunity came along, yeah, the right yeah. time for the right price. Sure. Then. Hell yeah, mm -hmm. but um, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, the work is is it's meant to be domestic. Mm. Like it is meant to be seen in a domestic space. Yeah. It's nice to have things in galleries, but I actually, I mean, I live with them. Yeah, you know, I have them. Around. Oh yeah, I know that. But I mean, people would buy them for their homes. But mm. Are you sort of hung up on them being singular, one of a kind things, or oh, you're well, o you are open to the fact that they're handmade? Mm. They can't be produced by machines. Like yeah. mass production would be. Produced by, I mean, getting somebody in a village, actually, yeah. lots of hand making. I remember the conversation. Yes. <laughs> okay, here's another, va, va, the thing of the bookshelf, or the um, cabinet. Yes. This is called Songbird. Okay, bring it right in the camera, let's just show it off. All the different angles. All the different angles, and... Okay. Okay, yeah, it's got a lot of character, this. It has a, it has a lovely form, I like its flow. Uh-huh. Mm. It's very kind of fluid. I like that shape. I've been making this shape for years now <laughs> in different... Uh, so do you just press it down? Like you, it's uh, formally it's up and then you kind of work it down or that's how you created that shape? The work is made um, similar to coiling uh -huh. if, I, if it was made of clay. Yep. So each, each layer mm -hmm. is added one at a time. So it's quite easy to shape it as, as you go. Yeah, right. But you need to have a sense of what the finished work will look like. You need to know how you're shaping it. So you need to know that you need, I wanted to make this kind of flowing out. Yeah, and like a lip, like a lip. Yes, and yeah. to have this kind of, this mm. kind of, don't, like, like a sound shell mm -hmm. form in here. Um, yeah, so that's, you do need to you need to have a clear idea of what you're making. But now, as as you're holding it, I'm thinking it'd be great to have a. Do you have like a storehouse of your raw materials? 
Do you keep your raw materials here? I don't tend to keep them. Uh, I mean, there's a pile of things in the yard there. That's and there's a pile of things here. Yeah, that's a pile of things. Uh, are, they the, are the pile of things drying out for some reason, or? I say no. You just... Mark may well tell you otherwise. <laughs> what do you mean? What would he say? I, well, come and I'll show you. Um, obviously, I do have things here because I sit in that corner. That's oh, my, that's your making that's corner. My making corner. And you watch TV. Oh, I have the radio over there, straight yeah, ahead. The television's there, but there's also the music. Okay. And there's my little box. Okay, well, and sit down, sit down as you would be. Thank you. And you're making things with your box. Show me the box. The box, sit mate. Back with just the box. my needles. Well, that's okay. Well, that's, um, this is what I'm interested in. Yes. This is stuff I never see. So, this is the needles. And under the table over oh. there is another stash of necessary equipment. So, you've got funky little bread, bread, yes, bread wrapper things. That's for making random weave. And you've got of. twine? Is that like plastic twine or um, plastic? It's what's called artificial sinew. Mm -hmm. So it's wow. um, it's waxed. It's basically a nylon thread okay. that's been waxed. Sinew, so it stretches, has strength. Um, it does have a bit of mm. bit of a stretch to it, um, but it, it binds quite sharply. Yeah, that's in case I stab myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got to forgive my ignorance. What what's this called again? It's a thimble. Ah, thimble, thimble. Yes, it's too small because I actually need it for my thumb, uh -huh. and uh, <laughs> doesn't really. <laughs> I stab myself there. Yeah, yeah. I need a thimble that kind of you need is, a... is the same shape as my thumb. Okay, well, thanks very much, Pete. Good luck on Thursday. I'll be there to uh, check it all out. Yes, I look forward to having your company. Great. Okay. <laughs> thanks, Pete. Yeah. And okay, so um, adios from Pedro TV. Until next week, when we meet another beautiful arts practitioner and find out what they've been up to. Okay. <laughs>